Hi guys, this is Tobias, Deal 3 MHT. And as my unboxing video was strangely enough quite popular, I thought I'd give you another quickie. So I thought we look at installing the software that Kenwood makes available on their homepage. So I've already downloaded uh, the three packages and unzipped them here to the desktop. So we have the USB driver, USB CDC driver. We have the control program for uh, storing and editing the settings. And then we have, a, well, I call it a utility program where you can basically more conveniently change frequency and listen and use the radio. The last one uh, we won't cover in this video. So we just will look at uh, installation of the USB driver and then look at the MCP program. So let's start with that. Let me double click here and drag the window down. And uh, yeah, let's keep it like that. You don't need to know all the other folders on my <laughs> machine. Uh, as you can see, we have a x86 and x64 folder in there. Usually these days you want to install the 64-bit version of the driver. And uh, as you can see, I have not connected any USB port to the Kenwood yet. The installation guide also says you should not connect the USB cable at this point. So double click here on this installer. Okay, you don't see that. I'm not sure if it will record the security pop up, but hey. Uh, right, welcome to the device driver installation wizard. Yeah, nothing special about it. Click next, uh, then you get a pop up. Do we want to trust JVC Kenwood Corporation forever? Always trust? Well, of course we trust Kenwood, so install. Finish. And uh, yeah, that was already the USB driver installation, nothing special. Next, installing the MCP program. Let me drag it down. Okay, so here we have a single setup exe in the folder, so double click. Okay, this is Windows 11. Uh, it's a bit peculiar. Click on more info, run anyway, if you've downloaded it directly from the Kenwood page. I will put the links in the description. Uh, then you get something like this, uh, select your language. Well, I'm not speaking Japanese, so maybe you do. <laughs> so English United States is the only option. Unfortunately, no German, French, whatever. Language localization yet, but I guess we get along with English. So click OK. And oops, the install window is already progressing. And yeah, a few seconds later, let's unpack the install shield and we can click next. If I'm looking down here, uh, that's because my monitor is uh, not in my line of sight. So it's not uh, that I want to be impolite. It's just the way my desk is arranged here. So accept uh, the license agreement. You can also read it if you want. Who reads license agreements? Next. Um, well, I will install in the default directory. Next, install. And suspense is rising. Okay, so installation has finished. Can close that. And in theory, you can clean up these three, uh, these two directories now from your desktop again. So let me see if um, I got an icon on the other monitor. Yeah, I'll drag it over here. So uh, after installing uh, this installer, you have a icon on your desktop MCP D75. And also in your start menu, you have a Kenwood folder with uh, MCP D75. And there's also a help in English and in Japanese. Let me drag that down. So you can read all that, but I think most of the program is self-explanatory. Of course, what we need to do now is um, insert the USB cable so that we can uh, do anything with it. So let me pause the video quickly. 
insert the USB cable and then we can basically download all the settings from the D75, edit them conveniently on the PC and then upload them again to the, uh, to the handset. Okay, and here we are. Uh, USB cable is connected and my Canvo shows up under COM3 on my machine. Uh, on your computer it might be a different COM port. And uh, excuse my voice, <laughs> I'm suffering a bit from a cold. Uh, as you might see from my glowing red nose, I look almost like Rudolph. And in case if you're wondering what is that silver thing sticking out uh, behind my Kenwood, this is just to tilt the display uh, that you don't see 100% uh, reflection from my ring light because then you wouldn't be able to see anything from the display. Okay, so uh, let's finish that and then I can have some tea and <laughs> recover my voice. Double click on MCP D75 and the first time it starts up, it asks you which COM port to use. Uh, and as we have seen, COM3 is correct on my machine. Um, so it seems to automatically detect which COM port to use. So we click uh, close here and the program comes up with this pop-up first that warns you to first import the settings from the Canwood before starting editing. My guess would be uh, that by importing first from the handset, it uh, knows which region the Canwood is uh, manufactured for. Is it a European module or a American one with the 220 meter band? So read that. The uh, summary is basically first import, then start editing. So we click OK. And the program window has already shown up in the background. Okay, so we can click either here on this icon, read data from the transceiver, or use the drop down menu under program, read data from the transceiver. So let's do that. Click the icon, click read. And as you can see on the right side, the Canwood goes into programming mode and downloads uh, all the settings and the channel list. Okay, and oddly enough, um, my audio interface also reset as soon as I clicked the OK button. So I'm recording this another time, a second time. And as you can see under menu configuration let's go there display you can see i've set up the my call sign in the uh, startup screen or under hotspot list i have my hotspot configured yeah i'm just uh, still finding my way into the menu system and try to understand it all but having that uh, program installed on your uh, laptop is a nice way to basically, I don't know, do daily backups or whenever you feel like it and then you can continue playing with the menu settings and if anything gets screwed up, you can always revert back to your uh, saved uh, settings that you stored on your computer before. Okay, so as a test, maybe let's go to display and try here. As you can see, you can program a customized startup screen. So you tick that box, go to bitmap, and then you have the default uh, startup screen, but um, you can also create your own. And the picture size is, let me have a look. Um, that is uh, 240 times 180 pixels, 24 bit depth. I think the one that I have here now is even 32 bit, bit depth, but only two colors. So. Uh, that seems to work as well. So let's try to program that into my handset and see if it works. I might lose my audio again after uploading. So um, there might be a cut in the video. So um, pressing write data to the transceiver and pressing write now. And indeed my audio has disappeared again after writing uh, the configuration file into the handset. So um, that looks like a bug fix for Kenwood. I'm pretty sure um, the audio interface should not be affected by reading or writing settings from or to the handset. Okay. Yeah, what else can I say about this program? 
yeah, I think uh, a few of you might wonder if it is possible to convert D74 settings to D75. Um, I don't have a D74, but I think what you can do is import and export the repeater list. So if you have your D74 settings file, you could probably export the repeater list, then download the settings from the D75 and use import repeater list from file to get your old D74 repeater list into the D75. I don't think you can uh, import all the other settings, um, but uh, the program can be started uh, twice, so with two instances. So you could basically put window where you have your D74 settings on the left side and a window where you have the D75 settings on the right side, and then you can manually make your way through the menu and um, basically everything that exists also on the D75 or also on the D74 could be carried over but I don't think there's an import and upgrade option yet um, where you can import old D74 settings and write them into the D75. Okay, I think my voice is deteriorating rapidly and uh, most of the guys in the US are probably busy with hamcation. So maybe uh, that video will be watched later. I hope it is useful for you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and until next time, 73.